baseline uh, charting uh, uh, metrics for cloud services. Um, uh, really, really cool stuff. And these, we've done some uh, really practical stuff uh, with Node. Uh, these come from uh, Python. Uh, for a lot of what he does. So Node doesn't fit everywhere what he's doing, but it, it really, really fits uh, in, in the use cases we want to talk about tonight. Um, so, yeah, Charlie. And uh, he's built the coolest uh, paper I've ever seen in my life. Look at there. <laughs> Just the DOM. 
around. So it's kind of like a browser, it's missing everything around it, just one chunky browser like thing. Um, and that is with a little bit of hackery, is happy to run inside that. Um, and this is really cool. So now we can run high charts inside that. It's pretty awesome. So the full flow looks a bit like this. User comes starts looking for a PNG. Our Python layer looks up the chart config, does the education, pulls up the data from the backend, pours that down into Node, which creates a window, sticks a chart in it, um, pulls the SVG out, like uh, Python, and then we do the easy bit, which is you know the SVG to PNG. There's lots of options for that. It's fine. It's fine to write fonts, make it look pretty, but yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, and then. We can put lots of different customer data inside this, and they don't leak between each other. It's all nice and safe. Uh, we can cache this stuff properly, um, but we couldn't do it if we were you know, web page rendering just one thing, snapshot, get it. So this is a good example of service-oriented architecture, where it's all very simple and self-contained, and you don't have to worry about authentication. This is entirely back-end service for us. Um, there's no state kept. You can kill it, bring it back up again, no problem. Deployment is that simple. Uh, we don't have to wait for the chart config. You don't go off and talk to a database. What's the chart config for this chart ID for this user? You don't have to wait for that. We don't have to wait for the chart data from the storage backend. The other layers will grab that stuff and send it all that. It's nice and simple. Um, it handles the caching inspired ways. And it's very easy, easily distributed in low levels. Um, it's just a plain HTTP service when we need more than one of these things. It's working pretty well with one of them so far, but when we need more than one, it's very easy. We'll stick a low balance in front of it, not be good. Um, but this is not exactly new. This guy, David Padbury, did it first. He had an excellent prototype two years ago um, of doing this, um, but it wasn't very solid. Um, but he demonstrated that you can run the charts inside and get this stuff back out. So what I've done is made this nice little file. You see the mustache there. It's called Dali. Our naming scheme is based on beards and things <laughs> with beards. So Dali's even an appropriate one for something that draws something. But, so, we want to give this to the Node community because I've found this very helpful when using high charts. Um, this has been running happily for months. We've been, we've been very happy with it. We won't give that away. It's up on GitHub uh, under our, our Metric Fire GitHub account. Please go and play with it. Um, this is my first large Node project, so I'm sure there's some stuff that's got wrong in terms of the, the style. I'm sure it can be improved. If you use high charts, please contribute back to it. We'd love to see what you, we'd love to work with you on making this really good. Um, Valley is a well behaved Linux team. Uh, I come from a, a bit of a this is I've been a developer in a sort of DevOps scene kind of position in my career. Um, so I care about these things, and I'm the guy deploying these things, and I'm the guy maintaining it, and I'm the guy getting woken up, this kind of stuff. So it diagnoses uh, uh, properly, it does proper prune dropping. Um, it has an init script, it starts stop status, it has a bit file, a config file, no nice needed. Uh, maybe we have a nice clean dev package for it. It's all deployable right now. This isn't you know, a gross type, it's something that has been stable and working very well, and hopefully. Did it right, the DevOps team in your company won't get pissed off if you ask them to install it. This is the config file. Um, there's basically no computer in this. That's it. Um, so, this was all very nice, but in some ways, no, it didn't help me. Um, getting stack traces out of Node was always interesting. Uh, there was a point where I, you know, something was failing inside our charts, and I couldn't get it to give me a stack trace. Couldn't get it to tell me even the rough line number that it was failing on. Um, I never did quite, quite, quite figure out why, but I ended up having to pull down all of Node, like uh, 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 process.exit or whatever, at various points inside my charts. So I had to go all the way back to, you know, prehistoric debugging methods to figure out what was failing. I eventually figured it out, or what it was now. But, yeah, so it didn't really help me with that. So the stack traces can be unpredictable because of the event driven model, but we'll work through that. And again, we're kind of new to Node, so this is just a newbie's experience, I guess. You can ask for a stack trace in your event node by using console.trace, um, but it's kind of noisy. Um, because there's so much stuff going on in Node, to ask for a stack trace, you get all of that. <laughs> um, which is good, it's alright, it's, it's all internal stuff. Other languages hide it, maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't, I don't know. But as a newbie, I found this disheartening. Um, especially after, you know, I could get, make it produce something like this quite useless after it had given me the two line whatever stack trace from something else. So this delayed me for a long time and this, this, this really annoyed me. Um, Node is quite young, it's changing quite quickly. Um, the developers are, are pulling things in and out uh, pretty frequently. Um, the Debian packages uh, that we were using at that time, the most re recent thing that Ubuntu was offering was version 0.2, and we needed 0.6, something 18 now. Um, so, of course, you have to go and make your own one and help with the adoption. Um, there are almost no packages for different NPM modules. Um, I don't want to run a tool like NPM that 
in an unsigned way goes and pulls down code from wherever and tells your production machine, that's not going to do it. I need something that can go locally and verify that it's not doing anything nasty. I want to package that up and then that goes in my repo and I get away from that. They're very careful about this stuff. Um, the problem is, it's just a bit off back then. Um, but no, it didn't help me with that because it's so new and nobody's really maintaining this stuff not getting it. Yeah, I mean, it's a way that fits into my existing deployment structure. I don't want to start asking Puppet to run NPM. Then all this gets kind of nasty. Um, so I have made this quick hack to wrap NPM modules up in dev packages. And this is probably the wrong way to do this. I couldn't find anyone else who did this before, and I needed something quickly. So I'm going to open source it. It's a really small thing. It's also under GitHub entry for our page. Um, if you need something like this, please come and play with it. Tell me why it is terrible. I would love to improve it. Um, maybe someone else will find it useful, maybe not. Either way, I'm probably going to learn something. Um, okay, the ranting bit. Um, Node is very much a, develop, uh, a developer oriented thing. It's made by developers. They, they don't quite mean that in the literal way. It should be derisive. They might not be aware of the norms of, of Linux sysadmining and things like that. So they, they might make some decisions that don't quite fit in. For example, a few months ago, Unix socket datagram support for sending a UDP like packet but completely internal to the system. The support for that was removed. A very poor justification. They said, and I quote, we think nobody uses it, and it's hard to get right cross platform. Um, so this is very lazy. From the, this, again, the system's view of this is very lazy to do this, and it's really angry. Um, but three months later, the very next stable release is gone. So now you can't expect too much stability from some parts of the node API. They will rip things in, put new things in. in. Um, yeah, if you want to, normally, uh, the, the problem that's, that's raised is that any, every other thing on a well-behaved Linux system, if it wants to send something to syslog on the same machine, it sends one of those uh, datagrams to devlog, which is not a real file, it's a socket, the logging demon is like, listening there. Um, but now, with Node, if you want to talk to syslog, you need to alter your syslog config to open an actual UDP socket on that machine. So you have to alter the, the syslog config um, and to a an admin or someone from a, from a system in any background, this is stupid, this is completely unnecessary, this pisses off lots of people. I would hope. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Um, and this doesn't help with, with adoption, this doesn't make me feel good about it. But it's a minor problem, and it's, I suppose, just a reflection of the relative immaturity of the whole thing. It's getting better, it's moving in the right direction, but there are some small stumbling blocks you'll find once you're trying to deploy it. Um, Python, for example, does this right, it does attempt to get it right cross platform. And on systems like Windows that don't support this kind of thing, um, the right bits of the API will cease to exist and give you the correct error. So other languages can get this right cross-platform, and they should do it too. Uh, if you happen to look at the slides later, there's some references there for the uh, yeah, you know, this is maybe a very good one. But how it did help me was that there are very few changes from browser-based JavaScript, and this allowed me, with a couple of years of JavaScript or browser-based stuff, um, allowed me to get up and running with Node very quickly. There were some small, non-specific things, like how you report modules and stuff like that. Um, then you had to learn, but most of it is, is already, it's the same. Um, so all the events and stuff you might be used to from laying the jQuery or whatever it is, it's, it's all the same. Um, there's very little code. Um, Dali, for example, the only 250 lines exist, like uh, Richard was saying earlier, the number of bugs we have in this is, is quite small because the actual line count is very, very low. Um, I found that the modules um, are all very complete. Uh, if you need a decent argument parser, it's called Summit already, it's called Commander, and a lot of nice logging things, then JS DOM gives you this almost browser like thing. Um, and then there's someone who's done uh, another module for proper databasing, proper pin file and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was really helpful in the environment is complete and only getting better. So, yeah, that's kind of it. I'm really happy with Node. Uh, it's awesome, or at least it's going to be soon. Um, the value is free. Please give me your feedback on this stuff. Um, one more slide that I didn't make, which is that um, our service has a node client now. It's published in NPM. So if you'd like to send data to our service or do something like that, you can NPM install whatever, a couple of lines, and you have a pretty graphic end of it. Um, thank you very much.
a reference to the pie chart object separately from the <coughs> You can just delete the yeah. There are some bits and pieces. Yes, done with them very well behaved. And we haven't had any problem with here we are with the pie charts. Pretty good. So, yeah, you didn't have too much trouble with it. Well debugging it would be great to be able to get um, I guess debug log entries every time the garbage collector runs finding out you know, what it thought it was going to replace so the, the actual figures for you know, I, I found this many objects and considered the piece out through at these one. This is very helpful um, to figure out how, how to make it not easy. It's not really another question to you, but uh, pie charts has a really weird licensing um, sort of arrangement where you have to work hard not to pay for an enterprise license, I think. Um, did your uh, processing of pie charts uh, on your own server side maybe uh, completely avoid that the base pie charts? No, the licensing model is based on the number of developers who have producing the product that might eventually use pie charts. Um, the fact that it, it runs on fewer end user systems doesn't seem to affect the yeah. uh, Do you reckon you're going to use Node.js for further parts of Metric Fire? Very likely. Have you any idea what you might use it for? The core of our service at the moment is a chunk of Python that responds to incoming UDP packets with actual endpoints in it aggregates those and every few seconds dumps them into the day store directly. Um, because of Python's skill, that's difficult, difficult to scale past one core. We'll certainly be looking at Node, um, we'll also be looking at Go. Um, maybe we'll end up using Node? I'm not sure. Uh, but it's definitely a contender for that particular use case. Yeah, yeah I heard about, um, a lot of different stories about the NPM scenario you're, you're talking about there. Did you reach out to the community and um, did, what happened? Um, no, uh, just what I could find with, with Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever. Um, no, I was, was kind of on my own. I haven't engaged with any of these things. Uh, we're waiting for a lot to start the start some sort of the community in Dublin with Ian a couple of months ago was because I didn't know anything. Yeah? Um, yeah, so there's lots of single threaded method service out there. Um, interesting because you're going to combine the background, as you just said. Um, uh, you would avoid Python, maybe, because uh, there's problems with Gil. Okay. Yeah, single thread scenario, is that actually an issue? Twisted scares me. Um, I started putting Twisted into, into a project about a couple of years ago, where I needed a very basic socket connection. And I, it, it was interfering in some way. It was turning on some sort of buffering, and I needed to be able to reach in lower than that to the socket to turn off that. Um, and Twisted was making that really, really hard. Uh, and I had other things to do, so I just tore it out and it myself in the socket. Um, based on that experience with Twisted, I'm um, talking SNMP using the Twisted stuff uh, a couple of years later. I don't know why Twisted. So I think I'd use something like Node or Oracle Go. It'd be really interesting to see like, a comparison of single threaded and uh, web services, or uh, web servers. Um, because after you've got past the single thread and the event of the bit, then you're really down to what the language gives you. Um, yep. And what the language gives you, uh, part of that is also well, what the infrastructure of the, uh, the community does and uh, build around that language in that scenario gives you. Right. So I saw a few benchmarks recently where comparing Node, Node and Go were probably the same task. Um, and Go was coming out on top of speed and memory usage almost all the time. Uh, it kind of doesn't matter because of what Richard mentioned, where all of the calls of legacy code and JavaScript. Sure. So more performance really doesn't matter, but definitely the libraries that are available do matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's more about developer speed than uh, runtime speed. I'm happy to accept a small bit of slowness. If it solves the problem, I'm happy to throw another machine at it, maybe in you know, several months. If anybody wanted to give a talk, I'd be really interested to see that. Though.